Welcome to my vlog on big data and cybersecurity. My name is Lebiao Lim. I'm a computer scientist and educator and a software engineer. Today, I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic, and it's the topic of detection engines. And I've created a micro benchmark for analyzing rules engine options that can be used to implement detection engines. Now, detection engines are extremely important in cybersecurity. Uh, every cybersecurity vendor has some version of a rules engine that does detections. And many uh, enterprises as well are implementing their own uh, rules engine to actually consolidate all the alerts and do additional detections on top of the alerts that they receive from different vendors. So this is the goal of this notebook, is to find the most efficient and lowest cost approach for implementing a rules engine for cybersecurity applications. The scenario is that you're gonna have your event data streaming through this rules engine. And this rules engine is gonna check the event data against a database of rules. These rules would be stored in a database table of some kind. This could be a Delta table. And the rules will be maintained by your detection engineer or your rules maintainers. And they will be adding new rules, changing the rules, deleting rules. Um, and these rules will then get applied uh, to the data uh, by the rules engine as the event data is streaming through. The output of these rules engine will be rules hits or alerts uh, in the detection case. And, and these alerts can then be sent downstream to other systems, including like SIM, SOARS, or any case management systems. Um, here, here are my assumptions. The input are the table of rules, the um, stream of data, the output is uh, a table or list of alerts or hits. Requirements are it has to be parallelizable by Spark, um, has to be scalable in number of rules, has to be low cost, has to support both batch and streaming loads. And the use cases, like I said, are like detection engines in the XDR-like scenario, or an auto disposition engine in a SOAR-like scenario where you apply rules to alerts to auto disposition and alert to either true positive or false positive conditions. And then third is alerting for fusion center fraud detection or other kinds of fusion analytics. We're considering four different options here. Um, the first is sort of a straw man. It's by unioning all um, the SQL queries for each rule together uh, into a single SQL query and just processing that on running that against the data using data breaks. The second is a case statement uh, SQL query where we take all the rules and we generate a case statement for it, both in the select clause as well as uh, putting the antecedents in the where clause. The third is a durable rules um, package. This is a Python package that implements reads algorithm uh, in C. Uh, this is something that came out of the expert systems uh, work um, a few decades back. Unfortunately, this is not easily parallelizable uh, and has similar performance characteristics with case statements. So we're not going to go into detail for that. The fourth option is dynamically generating a UDF that processes all the rules. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about this, but this turned out to be the best option. Let's jump through uh, some of the details. Um, this generation of data, I'll leave you to look at this. The parameters uh, can be configured. And uh, I'm going to show you quickly for th uh, three rules, what do the different options look like, right? So in the case of, uh, let's scroll up. Uh, suppose we have three rules. Uh, and these are the three rules in, in JSON. And a union all SQL will just take each of the rules, generate a SQL query for them, put the antecedent in the where clause, and union all the three rules together into a single query. Case SQL will put the antecedents into a case statement in a single SQL, um, and the case, the antecedent goes into the when clause, and then the consequent goes into the then clause. Um, we also put the antecedent into the where clause to ensure um, early filtering. And so that's the case SQL approach. The UDF approach is where we generate a uh, Python code that implements the UDF. And we actually put an if statement uh, for each rule that's in the database. And we generate the results and append the results 
the resulting alert into the results array. So this is generally how the three options work. Like I said, I'm not going to go into the doable rules uh, option. And so the rest of the notebook generates the data and you can look at the data. It looks uh, somewhat like this. This is generated data. We generate like 400,000 rows and then we generate a whole bunch of rules as well. Um, and these are the statistics of the table that was generated. Uh, we generate the rules. This is what the rules look like in the, in the Delta table. There's a rule ID and there's a SQL version of the rule, the Uber rules version of the Python version and the consequent, which is now at this point. And then we actually run the benchmark and I'll skip ahead to the results. And I've actually um, included some pre-run results. Um, there are of course results that are actually run here, which you can look at and you can run yourself. But I'm going to look at the sample results from just OneNote clusters, right? And this is this particular graph is the overview graph for 300 rules on OneNote i3 x large Spark cluster, running over 100,000 uh, uh, events. And we saw the unit all extremely expensive in terms of runtime at 500 plus second, um, case sequel about 10 seconds, durable rules about 10 seconds, UDF. Uh, about four seconds and uh, pandas UDF about 3.3 seconds, extremely efficient. And we also see that um, as you increase, if I'll jump to the next one, as you increase the, the number of queries all the way to 4,000, um, the UDF method uh, remains consistently extremely uh, performant uh, and even the uh, KSQL method um, at 4,000 uh, actually did the results were not that great. And if you go beyond, uh, sometimes it would hang even. And so these are the uh, performance results. I'm going to show you a cost estimator that I created. I'm going to jump ahead to uh, the visualization where again, if you have say an i3x large and you have 500 rules and you're streaming 160 rows per minute, um, this is your cost profile, right? And uh, and if you execute it at five minute in batches of five minute uh, intervals or 15 minute intervals or 30 minute, in fact, it doesn't make too big of a difference. Um, of course, if you do streaming, the cost would shoot up because the compute will be on 24 seven. But if you do batch, it's extremely efficient. In fact, if you use a cheaper machine type, um, you can run... Um, and if you have very low data rates, like 20,000 rows per minute, and uh, just 500 detections of 100 queries, um, your cost can be less than 150 per month. And this is both the DBUs as well as the, your AWS compute costs. So for less than $2 a month, you can run 500 detections on 20,000 events streaming through. Um, at five minute intervals. Now, of course, most of you have, uh, most large enterprises have a lot more queries. So you can go up to 4,000 and you have, and that's still only like, you know, uh, $5, slightly more than $5 uh, per month. Um, and if you go up to 160,000 rows per minute, of course your cost goes up, but still at $40 a month, that is extremely affordable uh, to be able to run 4,000 detection rules against your data at 160,000 rows per minute. So these results are extremely encouraging. And um, again, this, uh, this will enable you to run detections at scale. Um, and I will have further episodes that actually demonstrate how you would do that in a, a nice way on Databricks. But hope you enjoyed this episode. See you next time.